as you know, I believe that messaging is one of the most important things you can do if you're trying to build an online business or do any marketing at all. But there's a couple elements that I don't really talk a lot about, which is how to use a story or how to create an offer. Although I have a great offer and although I tell great stories, I don't have my own process on how to do it. I just kind of use my intuition and guidance, which is not something that's great for a podcast episode because I can't just sit here and go like, hey, use your intuition like I do to tell a story or create an offer. So today's guest uh, we brought on because he specializes in telling stories that are designed for conversions and crafting offers that go with that story. This is such a great conversation that I can't wait to have with one of our returning guests. So if you wanna find out who that is, well, keep on listening. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you are about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready, because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, we have a returning guest that I'm very excited about. If there's anyone in the online marketing world that I think thinks just like me, it's our guest today, and that is Colin Boyd. Uh, Colin has is a returning guest. We've told his story on a past episode, so if you want to hear his story, you can go listen to that episode. But today, we're going to hop right into some very specific content that I think is going to help you guys, and I'm super excited for this conversation. So Colin, uh, welcome to the podcast. Welcome back. Hey, it's great to be here, Brandon. We're brothers from a different mother, uh, so <laughs> making it real. We are. I mean, the way we think about communication and messaging and and all of that stuff is like so identical. We just use different um, methods of putting it out to the world. And so, and it's great because the methods you talk about, I don't really talk about and vice versa. So um, what I want to dive into today is really like how to tell a story and connect an offer to it. Because I think the biggest problem that I see is like people think they need to tell stories. And so they start like a webinar, for example, and they just start telling these stories for no reason because they're like, oh, I need to tell a story. And there's no intention behind it. So I want to dive into that, but for those people who don't know um, who you are or what you do, can you just give a little background of, of what, what you do? Yeah, so uh, you can hear me, I'm Australian. So I, I grew up in Australia. We're based in Newport Beach in California now. Um, but for me, I, it was, I, I got obsessed about the art of speaking on a stage early on in my expert business. And that was because I had... I was in my coaching business and uh, I had like half a client. And so I had one of those <laughs> clients that would pay you like every other week. They would turn up like to every second coaching session. And and it was, I was just, I had these big dreams of wanting to create a business and right. make a big impact. And I, ha and I was looking at my, my business and I'm thinking, this is, this is not happening very fast. <laughs> And uh, I had an opportunity to speak at, a, at, at an event. And this was a live event at that time, like in person. And, and that event changed my life. What happened was heading into it, I, I got, I was completely freaked out, absolutely overwhelmed. Um, I, I thought, I'm just going to look like an absolute idiot in front of everyone because it, I'd never spoken before uh, other than maybe at, at college, like going through my degree or at school, you know, or at my youth group and never professionally. And I remember that night I spoke and I made an offer, which we were going to talk about today. And, and I didn't realize at the time, but it was an irresistible offer. And what happened was out of, there was about 127 people there or so. Um, there was about 100, 120 of them. Uh, no, there was 137 was exactly who was there. 125 of them gave me their details and I followed up and ended up filling my whole Wait, coaching so there's business. there's 137 attendees and 125 of them bought? No. So saying? they opted into the offer. So oh, the offer, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that would have been an all-time I was like, dude, that's rate. like a 99% conversion rate. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> On my first presentation. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize, but I created an irresistible offer. And so what the right. offer was at the time, it was I was giving away coaching. So I was selling my coaching for uh, like, I think at the time, it was like $2,500 for three three months of coaching. And I, and I offered it to the audience. I said, I'm going to give away, you know, a whole bunch of coaching sessions. We, you know, it's valued at $500 an hour, but I'm just going to give them away for free. If you give me your details, you'll go in the drawer and I'm going to pick out like 20 people. I'm going to just do some free coaching for you guys. 
And so it was like a blend of that sort of stuff. And it was around career. I think I called it like a career accelerator coaching session. Now, at the time, I was like 27 years old. I wasn't in a no. career acceleration space. But <laughs> so, but, but, what I, but what I did know was I, I'd been studying human behavior for quite a long time. And mm. I, I, was, I understood how to, how to communicate. I understood how to, um, you know, just different mechanisms you could put in place to change your behavior to get better results. And right. so I was really just teaching them that. And, uh, and yeah, so we had 125 people opt in. I did uh, like, I think I did like 30 free coaching sessions, right? I just did as many as I could. Right. And on the back end of them, I, 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 I made an offer and we ended up, I ended up getting about 15 clients who were paying. So I had like straight away, like 15 full-time one-on-one clients. So I'm like stacked, yeah. right? Yeah. And then four days later, HP, Hewlett Packard called me. There was a, there was a director in the room, and he said, "Hey, love the presentation that you did. Could you come and speak at our next event?" Mm. And um, I was like, "Oh, let me check my calendar." <laughs> I, I had I had like nothing on, <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm free. I can squeeze you guys he, in." <laughs> totally. And, and then he and then he said, "How much are you to speak?" And I'd never I'd never spoken for a fee before, and I re, I remember my mentor had said like a good amount is around like four thousand dollars to do a keynote and i said four thousand i was freaking out like right. like you know i'm thinking four thousand dollars that's what i used to make in a month right uh, when i was working full time and um and the, he didn't batter and like, he didn't blink he just went so he was like absolutely that sounds great and i and i found out why was because at the end of the conversation i said how many people are going to be at this event and he said, oh, we're probably going to have about 5,000 attendees. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> so, you should have charged the dollar, like $2 an attendee or something. <laughs> exactly. So I'm thinking, well, it's like 75 cents an attendee. Yeah. I'm like, no wonder he didn't blink an eye. Right. And, uh, but they ended up being a client for 10 years. I flew around the world with them, spoke on all their stages, and it led to a wow. whole bunch of other work. But the crazy thing was, was that, that it all happened from that one presentation. And, and that, that got me obsessed with this idea of like, how do you, how do you speak on a leverage, in a leveraged manner, like a stage or, or an online webinar or something like that, um, and really you know, move people emotionally and action wise into the next step. So that, yeah. that was where it all started for me. And then now, now all I teach is helping experts to sell on a stage. So Love on it. a webinar or on a live stage, like how to actually speak in a way that sells. Okay, great. Well, I th you said something in that story um, just now and at the end, which is like you create presentations or communication kind of with the next step in mind. And so, you know, you're kind of already knowing here's where we're going and I need to like prepare people on multiple levels. You talked about human behavior and, and things like that. And we all know that most human behavior is actually emotionally driven and you talked mm -hmm. about emotional and all that stuff. And so again, I think the biggest problem with story is that people think they need to tell a story or have a story. There's no intention in it. And so what they do is they tell a story for the sake of telling a story, thinking if I share that I have kids and someone else has kids, mm -hmm. then we'll build a connection. And maybe you will, but it doesn't do anything to like drive sales, really. And so what I love about you is you have this thing called the conversion story, which is a story designed for conversion, where you know where you're going and you take people on a journey emotionally. Um, can we dive into that? Like, how do we, mm -hmm. how, what's the first step? How do we even do that? Yeah. Well, when most people, when they do a presentation, they realize that I probably need to tell my story. Mm -hmm. Like I need to tell a little bit about me. And right. like you mentioned, how many kids I have, where I live, maybe all that sort of stuff. And they might include some of those details. And then they include some of the accolades of why, they, why they're credible to speak and all that sort of stuff. Right. And that story, yes, it talks about you, but that's the problem is that it, it's mm -hmm. mainly about you. And the difference between a classic like origin story, which is that, and a conversion story is that a conversion story and that it, when you share your story, you're actually sharing it in a way where the audience listens and goes, this is my story. Mm -hmm. and, and it takes them down a path where the conclusion at the end of the story is, a, is in aligned with the mechanism that you help people with. Okay. Love and that. so the intentionality behind it is going first start, like you said, like it's starting with this idea of 
where where do I want to take the audience? Because any, I mean, if you look at influence, influence is essentially communicating in a way where the audience feels understood, mm-hmm. they feel respected, understood, and they feel inspired to take an action towards something. And when you communicate, most people don't communicate with with a intentional direction. And so they're sharing their personal story, but it's not intentionally aligned with the direction or the modality that they want to take people on. Right. And so that comes back to this idea of like a core premise. So you have a core idea or a core mechanism that you want to take people towards because you know that that mechanism has changed your life or you can help them to change their life with that mechanism. And you tell your story in a way where they hear your story, but they actually hear their story. And then mm. the conclusion will be that the mechanism that you help people with is is one of the key pathways that they can reach that result. Okay, so I'm I'm just when you're saying all this, what I my, where my mind's going is I'm looking back at the story you told us in the beginning of the podcast because yeah. all I said to you was like, hey, tell us about what you do, and then you went into a story. So I'm like, okay, what? There's an intention here. Why is he doing this? And when that story finished up, basically you told a story, setting up almost like for me having this internal desire to man to want to speak on stages very mm. well, like you did. Mm. And what I noticed is you didn't do the normal thing of like, here's, I moved to from Australia to the U S here and I have kids and I go surfing at the wedge and get body slammed every, every day, which we were talking which about the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I follow his Instagram. You, you guys should go follow him on Instagram. He has all these stories of him surfing the wedge. If you don't know the wedge. It's, it's like this intense wave in Newport beach. It's, it's, yeah. Pretty intense. But anyways. It's pretty dangerous. It's not built yeah. for uh, us 40-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. D- d- little disclaimer. Like if if you are not like world-class surfer or bodyboarder, don't go into the you, wedge. You'll die. You'll us. basically you'll, die. You'll, you'll, you'll die. You probably, honestly. <laughs> no, um, honestly. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> seriously. Anyway. So uh, now I've lost target. Where, oh, yeah. You didn't talk about any of that stuff. You, you, you stuck on this one point and it's almost like you're telling the story to create demand for this thing that you are either going to offer down the road or whatever. And so if I understand correctly, the, you had this core premise, which is I need to get people sold on this idea of speaking on stages and doing it well. So I'm going to tell the story of speaking on stages and what it did for me. And am I understanding that idea accurately? Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, my core premise is is that you're one irresistible presentation away from the breakthrough you want in your business. And that's my core premise. Like everyone's going to have a different core premise based right. on the vehicle or the mechanism that you help them with. And and whenever you, you know, you know, w- let's dissect this because whenever you bre- present the psychology of this, it's going to sound like, well, wow, that's the only way to get it. There are many ways to get it. But obviously, you know, um, if you present it in a way that is compelling, inspiring and true then the right person is going to connect with it and go i will you know if they go if their goals align with with the vehicle that you that you can help them with then they're probably going to be a right fit for that next step which will be Mm -hmm. the offer Um, but what's cool is when you tell your story and your conversion story is is you're essentially moving people towards your offer without saying buy my program uh love that Okay. And so how do we start to do this? Is is step number one, like just figuring out what your core premise is. And then once we have that figured out, what do we, what do we do? Are there certain elements we need to incorporate to make it effective? Yeah. So the start of it starts with your core premise and the core premise is usually just a sentence. Um, It's like the core idea that if you go, if the audience understands and believes this idea, this is the backbone that forms all the rest of my content. It, it's the backbone that supports all of the content ribs that build around it. And so my core premise is you're one presentation away. Another version of that could be that, excuse me, um, you know, speaking in an irresistible way is the most effective way to connect with your audience and convert them into clients. Mm. So that, that could be my core premise as well, right? Um, right. And everyone's gonna have a different core premise. You know, you've got a different core premise. And so based on your expertise that you're bringing to the audience, you're going to have a core premise that aligns with that. Now, based on that core premise, you have to consider, this is the question I like to ask. When was the first time I had that revelation? Uh, 
And when you are, because you have to think about where your audience is in the journey. And where your audience is in the journey usually is at the start of the journey. They are just before you had your breakthrough experience of that vehicle. And so they're seeking, they've got a hole that they want to fill, which is their problem. Right. And they're like, I've got this problem, I've got this aching problem, and I know I need to fill it, but I'm not sure what solution I need. And so they're just before having that revelation. And so when you, when you ask the question of like, where, when did I first have that revelation? What that does is it takes, it, it presents a story and obviously it's a true, it needs to be a true story, which is mine is right? like, I'm not making stuff up, but it's like, it presents a story of where the audience goes, that's kind of where I'm at with my business. Mm. Or that's kind of where I'm at with my journey. And one of the distinctions that I've made through doing this for so long now is that the, the external content that you talk about, about, you know, where you were, who you were with in your story, what you saw, what you felt, all that sort of stuff, the external content is what draws people into the story. And it's the internal content that people relate to the story. Ah, uh, got it. So in other words, they may not have been in the same situation as you. They may not right. have lived in the same country. They may not be in the same culture. But it's the internal struggle, the internal dissonance that you were experiencing before you had your breakthrough. It, that is the thing that the audience will go, wow, this person's like me. Because right. internal experiences are universal, where external mm. experiences are, are specific to the individual. Right. So same lesson, just different method of how that lesson was was gained, uh, so, yes. so to speak. Love that. Okay. Um, you know, it's really interesting. I, and I love this too, because a part of what I teach when it comes to messaging is like, if you want really specific messaging, it's like tap into your own experience of what you went through because most of us are helping with, you know, someone through a transformation we've been through ourselves. Not everyone, yes. but most of us. And so I always say, like, go back, tap into that. And you're, I mean, you're almost essentially saying the same thing. And there was a story that I told in our video series. Um, I think we ran it like two years ago, where I told this story about doing this webinar and it totally bombed. And I thought this is the day my life was going to change forever. And like, it was very emotional and, and all of that stuff. Did the webinar, no sales. I get a sale from someone and they said, I didn't even watch the webinar, but um, I bought anyways because I've been watching your content, whatever. Mm. And I remember picking the story because I'm like, okay, cool. The lesson in the story can, is going to convince or show people that what I'm about to teach is completely necessary. So mm. I was doing this without even realizing I was doing it. I was just like, okay, what can I tell to prove this point? And that's almost... Is that a, a very simple way to kind of like break down what you're doing here? Is like, what point are you trying to make? And like, what yes. story is going to prove it? Exactly. So like that story is great because it's it's a version of the the content that you did before you even ran the webinar was the thing that sold mm -hmm. people yep. on the program. It wasn't the webinar itself. Right. And so, which is messaging, right? And so yep. great messaging, great marketing should really almost make the selling obsolete. Like you right. don't even need to sell because they're already wanting to join the program. Right. And so um, like that's a great example and it aligns with, you know, with a, some sort of core premise that you would run with. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Okay. So we go back to the first um, time that, it, you know, it happened and we kind of just like start the story there. Now we just tell er everything or we have to be mindful and intentional with what we're saying, not saying are there certain things to avoid. Like, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess the, what's the, what's the next step? Yeah, I mean, for me, there's kind of like this. So there's three three elements involved in a in a in a conversion story. The first element is is connection. Okay. So it has to start in a place of you were in a place of difficulty, in challenge. Um, you were vulnerable. Um, so the thing that people are going to connect with is the vulnerability. They're mm -hmm. not going to connect with if you start off and hey, my life is was going pretty good. You know, I had a, had this, I had that, I had this, I had these opportunities, and and then I stumbled, and then I stumbled across this, and then this just made it even better. Like people are going to be like, "Oh, good on you," right. <laughs> but that's not my experience, right? <laughs> right. So, so you you know, like my life's going pretty good, and then I just bought a lotto ticket, and then and then I won Powerball, and now I'm like a multi-millionaire as opposed to just a normal millionaire. And like people are like, "Oh, good on you, buddy." Um, no one cares, right? right. So. The, 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 we have to start with challenge. We have to start with difficulty. 
we have to start with a place of where you felt internally a, a, a struggle in your life. Right. And you can describe that. It could be financially, it could be relationally. So, so one of the things that I teach is this idea of like starting in a moment. And so to start in a moment is you is, so for me, it was, I was sitting at this brown desk that I'd picked up from a 99 cent store. It had literally three legs. Uh, and because the <laughs> one, <laughs> Why, hold on. you put a desk with three legs. Yes. Why? Yeah. Because I couldn't afford a desk with four legs at the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honest to God, honest to God, I literally had three legs. How did and it stand up? What did you do, just like stack books or something? We had three and a half books. Yes, I had the phone, when we had phone books. Do you remember phone books? Yeah. Um, and I had phone books stacked up, holding up one one side of the desk. Someone had chopped one of the legs off, so I got it super <laughs> cheap. That's amazing, I love that. Yeah, and I'm sitting in this two bedroom apartment on the wrong side of the tracks, right next to the railway station. Uh, looking at my calendar and I had no, had nothing on, I had no clients. I had this dream in my heart of wanting to make a difference in my coaching business. And I had some great skills that I was learning, but, but I had no one to serve. And I felt this tension. So let me just press pause. So that's an example. Sometimes if right. I do the longer version of my story, like I'll start in that sort of moment. Now, what people, they may not have had a, a chair with three legs, but what that does is it brings someone into the story. It's like a little bit of a pat, pattern interrupt and right. it brings them into the story. I describe visually what I saw, what I was doing, where I was, that where I was positioned, right? I was in a two bedroom house, wrong side of the tracks, all that sort of stuff. And, um, but then I go into internal and I go, but internally, this is what I was experiencing. And as mm. soon as you go internal, then the audience would go, wow, you know what? I haven't had a desk with three legs, but... I, I felt like that before. And so, so that's kind of the, that's the journey. So we start with vulnerability and then we, we go let on me, that journey. Let me interrupt real quick. Yeah, Cause go for it. it was really interesting when you're telling that story, my mind automatically went to like when I was working out the garage before I even started my business, I was doing like a side hustle, trying to figure things out. And I had a desk, it had four legs, but it was a piece of crap desk falling yeah. apart and all that stuff. So and that's what people do is when they hear you talk, they're going to internalize and make it, how's this relevant to me? And your subconscious does it automatically. And so that, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, I just want to tell that quick story, but let's go on to the second piece here. <laughs> so good. So we got, we got, we're desk buddies. Yeah. And um, yeah, so like you, you start in vulnerability and then you obviously tell your journey of breakthrough uh, of like the journey that you went on. For me, it was speaking at an event. I have another version of that because I think contextually, you have to think about who the audience is. I do have a version of when I started doing webinars and and just flunked on mm. webinars. You know, similar to the story that you told. Like, I, I had six I had six hundred people sign up to the webinar and and no one bought until the last like hour. Someone bought the twelve pay, uh, <laughs> so I'd like I'd <laughs> I'd lost thousands of dollars, and uh, they're on the lowest payment plan. And uh, I think well, they ended I, up. I, I don't feel like you're really an entrepreneur until you make one or two sales and it's just a 12 pay. <laughs> like, exactly. we've, all, we've all had that experience. <laughs> I was so annoyed. Like I was absolutely devastated. Yeah. Uh, because I told myself I was going to make like, you know, 50, 100,000. Oh, like, I'm, like, I'm going to make $100,000 on this webinar. Like I had 600 people sign up. And no one bought until the last like four hours, I think it was. He bought, yeah, he bought the 12 pay. And, um, and then I tell the journey of my, my revelation of learning how to use webinars properly and then doing hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars in an hour on a webinar. But it was like that story I'll share in, if I'm talking about scaling or if I'm, if I'm an audience who wants to do online presentations more um, as opposed to like offline presentations. So sometimes I'll think about what's the context and I'll have like one or two different stories that align with my core premise. But they always have to have that place of like, you start in a place of vulnerability where like things just went crap and sucked and right. what you were experiencing in that, because that's what people relate to. And then you go on that journey of breakthrough and then and then you have, and then you experience the breakthrough, which is the credibility, right? Because mm. because you answer these, these are the three questions that I think people should write down. The first question is, are you like me? That's the first question we have to answer. And if, if, if when you tell your story, the audience goes, you know what? I, I feel like they're like me in some mm. way. And as soon as they do that, all of a sudden they're going to like you because, because you're like them, right? right. Um, similarities creates likability. And they're going to trust you more because because you're like them, right? So that like and trust factor starts right from the start. 
And then you move into the place of credibility where you've experienced the breakthrough, you've gone on that journey, the decisions you've made, you, you've achieved something. And you actually don't have to spend as much time on that as people think. A lot of the time people are trying to prove that, oh, I'm really good at what I do. I swear I'm good enough. But that's because we come in with all of this stuff, you know, all of the, the thoughts in our heads of like, am I going to be good enough? Will they like me? Will I be judged? Will I be accepted? So we, we try to like stack on the credibility. But, but the, the funny thing is the audience doesn't need that much credibility. They need a little mm. bit, but not, not too much. And, um, and then, so you go on that journey, but if, and then if you can link it to that core idea and align it with your main revelation, which was, you know, for me, it was that in one presentation, I got a breakthrough that I, in my business that I was always hoping for. And, and if you can align it to that one idea, then all of a sudden your story moves them towards the thing that you can actually help them with. Um, which which is your your offer or your program or something like that? Okay, gotcha. Well, let's move into that conversation with the yeah. offer because I feel yeah. like I feel like that if you have a really good story and a crappy offer attached to it, the sales are still going to be super difficult to have. And I think that you need both of them working together. So I think based on what we have, we have a good kind of framework and process to follow of creating that conversion story. But now how do we start to structure an offer that works with that story so they kind of like work cohesively together? Hmm. I think for me, an, an offer, um, one of the, the main things with an offer is, first of all, you got to do that. Is this, is this irresistible? So like literally asking the question of yourself, going, if I had this offer in front of me, would I go, you know what, this is a really good offer. Because if you aren't convinced that your offer is irresistible or is amazing, then how on earth, how can you convince your audience? Like you can't, right? Um, and so that's the first question I ask is when you look at your offer, you go like, is this actually an irresistible offer? The second thing I think about is, is the philosophy of an offer. And the philosophy of an offer is that an offer for me is an invitation to your audience to enter a space of transformation. And so a lot of the times people see selling as trying to get the audience to do something. Mm. Like it's, I'm trying to get you or manipulate you or push you even. People use that word, put, they don't want to be pushy. Right. right? They try to push you to do something. But what if you saw an offer, it's simply, it's like a, it's like a room that you've created. And when you make the offer, all you're doing is just opening the door and saying, would you like to enter this space? I've prepared a space for you. It is a space of transformation. It's a space that's protected. And the protection mechanisms are the commitment levels that you have to bring to the offer. And that is the currencies we require, which is money, which is obviously one of them, very clean. Mm -hmm. It's a very clean currency, money. It would be time. It would be energy. It would be maybe confidentiality, depending on the level of the offer. It would be um, courage that for them to show up. Like these are all the currencies that are required to enter that space. And I think that when you change your philosophy of what an offer is, as opposed to like, I'm trying to sell them into my course, you go, no, I've prepared a sacred place of transformation for you. And if you align with this offer, here are the commitment levels that are required. And if you're ready to commit to that, then you can, you can come into this space. Gotcha. So how do we start to do that? So, I mean, for me, uh, first of all, I think about like, what do people want? And so the, the, what most people do when they describe their programs is imagine you're selling a holiday or a vacation uh, and you go, okay, so imagine this, Brandon. It's 5 a.m. and you see the lights pull up. It's the Uber. And you get up and you grab your bags and you head out into the Uber. You get in the back and you drive into the airport. You get in the airport and you get on the plane in the economy. You're flying out and you land, you get off. And then you catch another taxi to the, to the uh, resort. Then, then they, you arrive, they welcome you. And you get in your room and then you're at the resort and you're on vacation. Like that is literally how people describe their offers. Right. And what that means is like they go through all the nitty gritty 
like templates and tools and steps that people have to do to like achieve the outcome. Where if you described it as imagine you're laying on a flat deck chair and you've got your favorite drink in hand, you've got the people you love around you and you can feel the warmth of the wind blowing over your skin and you're looking out over this beautiful, vibrant sunset and you're taking a deep breath in and you're just experiencing the peace, the joy, the fulfillment of what this vacation has brought into your life. Do you want to go on vacation? Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> well, most, most people try to sell the Uber ride right. as opposed to the destination. Mm. And, and so when I say like describing the offer from an outcome perspective, when, you, when we describe an outcome, when we describe our offer, I think we need to spend less time going through the steps that people have to go through like the steps need to make sense. That's usually the modules or whatever it is. Right. But really spending time describing on like what do people want? And so like, and describing that in what, what that would give them, the impact that would have all that sort of stuff. So I think that's a, like, that's one of the keys that most people miss. Okay. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> and I, I do see that as one of the biggest problems is I think a lot of people try to sell the modules and the titles and the videos and, and all of that stuff. Um, so when we present like that offer, if we're not like, if the selling point is not going to be those modules and those videos, is it just like, is it the, is it how we position the product before we present it? Is it how we structure the bonuses? Like, how do we start to piece? Like, I guess, I guess what I'm asking is like, what's the framework or process of like putting a lot of these pieces together? Hmm. Well, I mean, in my mind, like there's obviously structures to an offer. So there's like, there is the title, right? Of what it's actually called. Mm -hmm. um, there is the promise of what, what you can actually give them. There's the steps, the modules, and that's kind of forming the base of it. Um, then there's the bonuses. And I think what most people don't realize is that their bonuses are, I think, more important than the modules. Yeah. And so the bonuses should do two things. They should create immense desire for people where they would go, they look at the bonuses and they go, I would, I would honestly pay the price of the whole program just for that bonus or just for Love those that. bonuses. Yeah. And, and that could be like a, that could be like a live event you have as a bonus. That could be some sort of like templatized system that you have as a bonus that, what most people don't realize is they 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 could include those templates in their program and they probably should. But right. when you bring it out as a bonus, the bonus is about amplifying the best parts of the offer. And so the bonuses should be that thing that helps the audience to tip over the edge of going, you know what, I do want to take that next step because that I want that bonus. Right. And so the first thing is the bonus should create so much desire that they would pay the whole price of the program just for that, for what, just for the bonuses. The second thing is the bonuses address objections that the audience has to make to saying yes to the program or to the offer. And so whatever objections that is, it could be around, you know, but what if I'm just getting started? What do I do in the first 30 days? It could be an ejection around money. So maybe you can create some sort of like bonus where you can show someone how to make back the entire investment in under seven days or under 30 days or some sort of realistic number. Um, it could be a, a bonus around, you know, I know for us, like, you know, obviously we teach people how to sell on webinars. And mm. so one of the bonuses is actually how to fill the webinar. Now, mm. obviously that should be a core part of what we do, but, it, but it, it answers the objection of, but yeah, but how do I get people onto the webinar? And so right. we have one bonus that purely focuses on filling webinars and that handles an objection of, yeah, but I don't know how to get people onto webinars. And so okay. you think about what are the core objections and build bonuses around them. Okay. I love that. So, you know, one of the ways that I kind of look at it is, and let me know if you don't agree with this, is I kind of like, I put all of our bonuses and I put all of our courses and modules on a piece of paper and I look at them as, as elements. And I'm like, how do I rearrange these elements to make it the most desirable? And I think a lot of people get so stuck in the idea of my course needs all 10 modules. And it's like, well, what if we made the course six modules and then we took the last four out and added them as bonuses? Or what if we even made the bonus the core offer sometimes? Like for example, in our event that we just did, we presented an offer, but the whole event 
was focused towards like webinars and sales mechanisms. And I'm doing a workshop and I used to have our, our top level program NGM plus as our main offer. <clears throat> and then I would offer this webinar workshop as a bonus. But what we did is we actually made the webinar workshop, which used to be a bonus, the core offer and said, Hey, if you guys want to attend this workshop for $8,000, you can. And now I'm going to give you NGM plus six months for free, which is normally $8,000. So it's the same elements, but we just rearranged it, which made the offer so much more des desirable. Is that kind of a, a very similar thing to what you're, you're talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think most people get stuck on, oh, but Brandon, like that's a part of the course. Right. And they get stuck on like, oh, I have to keep that in the course where, where you can exactly what you said is like put all the elements out there and go, what are the most desirable bits? What are the bits we want to highlight and then make them bonuses? Because for me, bonuses are really just highlighting key bits. Right. Um, and some of the templates that you highlight could actually be part of module three. But, but you highlight it and you like re, you repackage it as a bonus. And I love what you did. We, in fact, we, we, when, we were, when we were running live events, we did that exact thing is we mm. sold Sell From Stage Academy as an event. And then as a bonus, you get the online course. Mm. Um, so I think you can, if, if anyone has workshops that they run and live workshops, you can 100% reverse engineer it and go, or just reverse it and go, you sell the workshop and then the bonus is the coaching. Love, love that. I love that. Well, and James talks about this too, as he calls the football phone method, where back in the day, Sports Illustrated, in order to sell their subscription, they had run these commercials about this football. It was a football that was a phone. And they would it was like almost like an infomercial. Like, look how awesome this phone is. And we're going to give you this phone for free when you buy a subscription to Sports Illustrated. Instead of saying, hey, buy Sports Illustrated. And then as a bonus, we're going to give you this football phone. It's like, no, we're going to create demand, 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 give it for free when you buy a subscription. It makes it a, a, more of a no brainer. So rearranging things around could be, could make the difference between a good and a bad offer. Yeah. And I think like what comes up for me is people get really stuck in their current offer. So they get really stuck in like how to actually deliver the offer. And I know actually it was, you brought up James. James actually inspired me several, it was about six, six months ago or so. And, and there were some core elements in our offer. And, and he, was, he was just on a Facebook Live and he was like, why don't you just like take one of the modules and just repackage it and just send it to your list and go, hey, the, you, don't, you, don't, you don't actually say I'm selling one module of the program, right. but you would repackage it as a standalone little mini course. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. And I just like sent one email. I think we did like $12,000 in like three days wow. on just on like a $97, you know, one off. Hey, let, let's just buy this little, this little program. And it was just a really cool idea of like, you, you know, you don't have to always sell it as the whole course. You could sell little bits of it, almost yeah. like little offers um, and repackage them and take them out because there's all little elements. And then, and then even on the back end of those little offers, you could sell the bigger program of, hey, do you want to have the whole thing as well? And you can you can bring that in. So I think yeah. people just get stuck. They get inflexible in their approach to how they're making I, their offers. I, I think so too. We had a, a, a coach or some, I forget who it was. I had someone I was working with. They had a 12-week program and they couldn't sell the 12-week program and it was like $3,000 or whatever. And I said, well, why don't we just make it, uh, three programs and each one of them's four weeks and then you sell it for like two ninety seven, then four ninety seven, then like six ninety seven. So you increase the price as you know as each one goes on because now there's more trust and rapport, and and they want to continue. And they, they got stuck at first. They're like, no, 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 but my program has to be twelve weeks. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. This is your program. And I said, it is. It still is twelve weeks, but we're changing the offer around so it's actually three different offers instead of instead of one. And sometimes like it's better just to have something lower on the front end to get people's get, to get them in the door and then you can upsell on the back end. But you're right. Like I think sometimes people are so rigid and this is the way it has to be because this is my process. And it's like, well, let's just figure out how to sell your process to get as many people into it. Mm. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Um, okay, cool. cool. Anything else that you think we need to address when it comes to offers? Um, I mean, I feel like they're some of the most important things is the bonuses is the idea of selling the outcome. Um, I would say one of the biggest things that people forget about is really just looking at the frame of like, what are the resistances that people would have to buying an offer or saying yes. And 
for me, that is, I mean, that's the whole process. And I know that you involve that a whole lot in the whole process as well, right from the, the front end of the messaging um, of like, what are the things that the misbeliefs, I think you talk about, like what are the things or the wrong type of beliefs that people have that you can reframe or just the resistances that people have. And so for me, the the webinar itself and the actual offer itself should should really be addressing all of those things um, as you're going through. And and even the sales page itself, because I think the sales page is obviously part of the offer mm. of of most people who don't spend, they, they think about how do I, how do I like make my offer desirable, but they don't think, what are the resistances that the audience has right now? And have I addressed all of those? And so you can frame them as questions. You could frame them as a really elegant way of doing it is, is framing them in case studies or testimonials. Uh, and, and, and so like if you, if you take specific people and you might say, you know, I know some of you, you know, I know you might be thinking, uh, yeah, but I'm totally new to this whole industry. Like I, I've still got too much to learn. Well, that's exactly how Jenny felt when she started. There's like a photo of Jenny. And in fact, you know, in the first 30 days she went through these two modules, she implemented it and made this much money straight away. And so like addressing it with a case study is a really like elegant, sophisticated way to address on the sales page. Gotcha. Okay. Love that. Um, okay. Now, if someone was putting together their um, conversion story, what do you think needs to happen first because we talked about like how offer can can be rearranged and let's let's just use my example like i had ngm plus which was six months of messaging and then we actually and with a bonus of a webinar workshop then we moved the webinar workshop as the main offer so if i do if someone does a shift like that does that mean their conversion story has to change because technically i would I, i'm assuming i'd want a story for the messaging side, but then if I make the webinar, I would need a webinar story. So would I have to change my conversion story if we make a shift to the offer like that? Um, yeah, I mean, you may have you may have to tweak it a little bit um, and integrate a little bit of the mechanism that you're teaching at the workshop, like because you kind of like you are setting up the content for the workshop. But I think I don't think you have to change it too much because okay. the offer is the thing you're going to sell at the end, right. and so. As long as you don't like downplay the purpose of the workshop in the story, I think you can still keep the same same conversion story and maybe add little bits of the whatever the front end offer was, like the free workshop on webinars or whatever. And then um and then but you would you would say I would still stay strong in the main conversion story, which is, you know, for you it might be messaging. And so like staying leaning into that and still telling that because that's the thing you're going to offer at the end. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, and teaching all of this stuff to us. Um, one of the reasons why I want to have Colin come on too is because the, st the conversion story is one of the most vital tools you can use when you're going to sell. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a successful funnel. I don't think I've seen a successful webinar that didn't include some sort of story. And so if you found, like realize that when listening to a stock, you're like, oh my God, I'm the person who's totally just like telling a story for the sake of telling a story and you want to start to put together your conversion story, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do on the podcast, which is we're going to present an offer. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Because Colin said for, for 47 bucks, he's going to let you guys into the conversion story program. So Colin, can you just tell him a little bit about what is in that program. And just keep in mind, guys, this is, I never, ever pitch anything on this. Probably is the first time I'm ever like presenting some sort of offer on our, on our podcast, but it's $47. Come on. Uh, so Colin, you just break down a little bit of what's inside of that. Yeah. Love it. I mean, the price of a few tacos is $47 now. Yeah, so it's true. <laughs> I mean, this is worth a little bit more than some tacos. Uh, so the conversion story formula, my goal for it, is for you to discover, create, and share your conversion story within 48 hours. That, okay. That's the goal. And so it's a, it's a simple process. It's not a long course. Like it's not one of these ones that you're going to buy and never do. It's lit, like you can consume it in a couple of hours, you know, and you're going to have your conversion story spat out 
and ready to actually share on your next email, on your next Facebook Live. In fact, I encourage people to just get straight into it and just share it like on a Facebook Live or share something like that. And so that's the the process is it, it, it helps people create their core premise. It, it, it will help you to find the right story because that's what a lot of people struggle with, finding the right story. And then the whole process of designing the story and then all the ways to share the story and, and my goal is, like I said, within 48 hours, you'll be able to do that. And if you want to transition to an offer, if you want to transition to some sort of next step, that could be a PDF, that could be a short paid program, that could be like, usually you wouldn't transition to like a $2,000 offer, but you might transition to like a $17 offer or a $47 offer or something smaller where people can kind of get a bit, a bit of a taste of, of some of the, the strategies that you teach. And like that, that thing alone will be an asset. That story will be an asset that you'll use for the next decade of your life. I love it. And again, I'm just presenting this to you guys because I think it would be valuable. I, I see people mess up their stories all the time. Um, I do get, I, I will have an affiliate commission off of it, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm, I'm not doing this and I probably won't make a ton of money off of um, whatever percentage I get off of a $47 sale. So, so again, this is not a, Hey, Brandon just wants to make money thing. This is literally like for 47 bucks, we can fix Colin can fix this problem for you guys. And I see a lot of people have this problem. And if you want a conversion story, a story that's here designed to convert, then Colin's the only person I recommend. So, um, whether you guys join or not, it doesn't matter. Um, I hope that this episode was very valuable for you. I probably should give you guys the link to go buy as well. Almost forgot that. So if you do want to just go to brandonlucero.com forward slash CS. So that's for conversion story. So brandonlucero.com forward slash CS. And I know there, there, is it an order bump or an upsell that might come up about, um, how to put an offer together to Colin? Yeah, so there is there are there are a few other options on there. Um, one of the things that I notice is that people struggle to transition from their content to their offer, and mm. so I've got some really cool scripts. Like if you want to master that little thing, uh, when I say little, it's actually a real pinch point for people. Um, there's some some scripts that you can grab there as well. Like there's a few there's a few little um, you know other offers that you can grab there as well. But I think start with the conversion story. And if some of the other things, if you want to dial in your offer, there's actually something on your offer there as well. Um, you know, there's a few options for you, but I think start with your conversion story. And, and if, if you resonate with some of the other things as well, um, I, I know that you won't be disappointed. I mean, I know that I could, we could, we could offer these things for like a thousand dollars. Like that's the level of this, this program. And, and uh, I just know you'll walk away and, and just be stoked that you're clear on it and, um, and feeling really confident in your story. I love it. And, um, you know, this is also the other reason why I wanted to do this for you guys is that this is also stuff that I don't teach. I teach messaging. We teach, we're starting to get into webinars and ads and emails and stuff like that, but I don't teach story and I don't teach offer. And so if I was going to have anyone come in and teach it to you guys, it would definitely be Colin. And at this price point, which everything is well under a hundred dollars for each, each thing. Um, I don't think you can, you're going to find a better deal anywhere else. So just go to brandonlucero.com forward slash CS. If you're interested, if you're not, I really hope that this uh, podcast episode was enough to get you going and to help you stop making some of those offer and story mistakes that you've been making. So Colin, um, if people want to learn more about you, where can they go? Yeah, so I've got a podcast myself, which is the Expert Edge podcast. And uh, I'm quite active on Instagram. So it's just at Colin Boyd with one L, C-O-L-I-N-B-O-Y-D. Uh, love to connect with you. If you found this valuable, send me a DM. Love to connect with you on Instagram as well. Um, let me know what's been most valuable. Awesome. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate it, buddy. Love it. All right, guys. Uh, head over to that link, brandonlucero.com forward slash CS if you're interested. If you have not left this review on iTunes, um, please do so. I love reading every single review that you guys leave. Um, it's one of those things that just really shows me what you like and what you don't like. So head over there, let me know what you like, why you like the podcast, and we will try to do more of whatever you say in those reviews. So head over there and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care, everyone. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested. And thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.